architecture diagrams is one of those tools that every developer should master. Why? Because they are an amazing tool to communicate. They are an amazing tool to think. They are an amazing tool to plan something in the future. And they are amazing because with just a few boxes, with just a few arrows, you can explain so much more than with a lot of text. They are simple, they are convenient, they are easy to draw, and they are collaborative. And you can use them for a lot of things, from architecture diagrams, to workflows, to interactions, to API contracts, to data schemas, all of that. You can do all of those things with a simple diagram. So as you can see, you can use them in a lot of different scenarios. That means that in the market, you'll find tools that have different capabilities. Ones will focus more in one of the scenarios, another one are a bit more versatile. So it's hard to pick the one that you should use. So in this video, I want to share with you 10 tools to draw those diagrams. And let's go through that list, talking about the strengths, the scenarios where they shine the best, and all of those things that are important when deciding to adopt one of those tools. But first, let's talk about what types of things are important when you need to pick a tool for drawing diagrams. There's some key aspects when deciding between one tool or another. So first, you need to think about the obvious thing that is budget. While some tools allow you to start using it for free, others can be quite expensive. And the other thing is about collaboration. While some tools are great if you want to use them alone, okay, you are the one just using it, you draw your diagrams, they are fine, they tend to be free, but also you have those that are more focused on team collaboration. So if you want to have diagrams that are built together with a distributed team, for example, that might impose a different type of solution. Also, nowadays we have some tools that allow you to express those diagrams as code, others don't. Another factor is the complexity to draw those diagrams, to create those diagrams and the level of control that you have. We have also the learning curve. And finally, one that is quite important, if those diagrams are pretty or not. So let's take a look into those tools. The first one is Miro. And before you stop watching this video because I mentioned Miro, let me tell you one thing. Miro is an amazing tool for collaboration, for building diagrams online in a huge team, in a huge organization. And that leads to one important thing, that is, if your organization nowadays is paying for a license of Miro, likely you will be using Miro. And from my experience, usually huge organizations tend to use it. While Miro is not a tool designed specific to build architecture diagrams, it's a tool that is widely used in huge organizations because you can use that tool for different types of purposes, not only to draw your architecture diagram, but to run meetings, to run team ceremonies, to do icebreakers, to do a lot of different things. So if your organization is already paying for it, likely is the one that you will have. So I honestly believe that it's a great whiteboarding tool. It's not perfect for building diagrams for software because it involves more work than with other tools, in my opinion. But it's a great collaboration tool when you need a canvas and everyone joins together trying to craft something. You can start for free, but once you need more advanced features, you will need a subscription. The next one is Lucid Chart. It's another one that I will put in the same category as Miro. It's widely used in huge organizations. It's quite easy to use. It's good to do different types of diagrams and to collaborate. So it's the same type of tool. Once again, you can start for free. If you want to take it to a different level, you'll need a paid subscription. Draw.io or diagrams.net is a great tool, especially if you want to start with something simple, something that is free, something that is open source. Obviously, there's some limitations when compared to advanced tools that have paid versions, but it's great for starting to build your first diagrams to quickly draw something for yourself. And sometimes when you have a small team, it's more than enough. It's quite easy to use. You just need your browser and you can start building your diagrams. By the way, don't tell anyone that I told you this secret, but most of those diagrams that you can see on LinkedIn, where you see the connections flowing and moving with animations, they are built with 
Draw.io. If you are looking for an enterprise-grade tool specific to draw diagrams of your architecture, of your system, the one that you might be looking for is IcePanel. IcePanel is clearly designed with the software in mind. It's not the typical collaboration tool for wide organizations where you have different departments using it. It's a tool that has developers and software development in mind. There are some interesting things in IcePanel, for example, the use of C4 models. We'll talk about them later. And it's extremely simple to use. It's great for teams. The drawback is that it can be quite expensive. Another great tool for the same type of use cases is Eraser. Eraser is one of those tools that I discovered recently and I really like. Why? Because Eraser has that uh, whiteboard style of collaboration, so it's a tool with collaboration in mind. It's great for software development. You can build your diagrams as code. And one thing that I like is the fact that you can quickly grab the assets that you are looking for. For example, if you are building a diagram specific for Azure or AWS, you can use the building blocks with the correct symbols for each one of those technologies that you are using. And also you can quickly go to the sample gallery and you can find a diagram for the use case that you are looking for. So it's simple to use, it's great for teams. You can start for free as well. So it's something that is quite promising in my opinion. One interesting thing that is happening is that many of those tools that I mentioned, they start embedding AI in their products. So you can start using AI to assist you during the process of building a diagram. One of those tools is Eraser. Let me show you what the use of AI can be in a product like this. For example, in Eraser, if I go into a diagram, I can bring an element that will be an AI diagram. That means that now I can have a prompt saying that I want, for example, a microservice infrastructure that accepts payments. It uses a NoSQL DB, should be hosted on AWS. When a new payment is made, it calls a microservice specific for fraud detection. So now I can ask to generate a diagram for that. So you can see that it tried to express all those things that I mentioned into a diagram. So it knows that it is an AWS environment, that I have a payment service that is an API, is using the icons for EC2. So it's saying that I'm hosting this in EC2, calls a NoSQL database. If we click here, we can see that the icon is a DynamoDB. I mentioned NoSQL, that's why. And we have the fraud detection, all of that. So one of the great use cases of using AI with diagrams is by using it for doing this first version of the diagram. So you express in natural language what you are looking for, what you intend to build, and we'll draw most of the things based on good samples that you can find online and that the AI model, the LLM was trained on. So it's a great way to accelerate your ideas, your work when you want to express something quite simply with the use of AI. And Eraser is just one of the tools from this list that uses it. Nowadays, many more of those tools start adopting AI into their products. Excalidraw is a lightweight tool to build diagrams. I really like to use Excalidraw, especially because for individuals it's free, so you can still use collaboration tools in the paid version. But if you want to quickly brainstorm, if you want to quickly draw some things and try to think with the diagram, Excalidraw is great. And one of the reasons why I think it's great is by the fact that the diagrams don't feel as polished and that removes some pressure when you are trying to do a, a brainstorm. There's even that small detail that the diagrams look like they were and uh, draw. And that style leads you to think about quickly expressing your ideas. You don't think as much in the small details like the colors, the, if the lines are perfect, you don't think about those things. So it's great for um, quick chat with the team, trying to express some ideas, trying to build a solution, doing a brainstorming. It's a great tool for that. And you can use it for free as an individual. Structurizer is the default go-to 
tool if you think about C4 models. So if you're not familiar with C4 models, it's one way to express your system with different levels, okay? There's different types of models, different types of diagrams that you build that they are interconnected, kind of like different lands on top of your system. And Structurizer is the default tool to do those type of diagrams. So if you are into software architecture and you want to start documenting your system, you want to have those diagrams version controlled, Structurizer is a great way to start. The only problem that I see with Structurizer is the fact that you need to learn the C4 models to take the best out of it. Besides that, is a great tool, especially for software architects. Plant UML is the OG of uh, diagrams as code. If you want to define a diagram using plain text, Plant UML has been in the market for a long time. It's extremely powerful. It supports a lot of advanced scenarios like building your sequence diagrams, for example. You can do a lot of different things with it. The drawback of Plant UML is the learning curve of learning how to to use it. But it's so powerful that even nowadays, some of those tools that I mentioned, they support Plant UML as well. D2 is another text-based diagramming language. And while the ecosystem is quite small when comparing with Plant UML, you have the advantage that the language, the syntax, is quite simple. It's easy to understand. It's uh, quite quick to uh, uh, define something. So if you want to, for example, quickly prototype something, it's simpler and easier to understand the syntax when compared to Plant UML. So if you are looking for something like Plant UML, but simpler, D2 might be the one that you are looking for. Or you can use something like Mermaid. Mermaid GS is one way to define your diagrams with text as well. The beauty of Mermaid is the natural integration with Markdown. And Markdown is a great way to build documentation. So it seems natural to build documentation and use something like Mermaid to define diagrams. So if you are looking for something that is quite simple, that you can do it through text, and that naturally integrates with your documentation, Mermaid GS is a great tool for that. The drawback is that you can't adjust some details like you can do in other languages. So you don't have the same fine-grained control over the output that you are building. But to show you what does that mean, you can watch this video right here, where I have an in-depth analysis of Mermaid GS and why it's so powerful and the use cases where you will love it.